The theory that all infectious diseases are caused by microorganisms is known as germ theory. It seems very obvious to us nowadays, but it's only been around 150 years since it was first accepted by the scientific community. The earliest proposals of germ theory were met with strong resistance at the time, but they are now today regarded as heroes. This video will speak about what people thought caused infectious diseases in the past, to how germ theory was eventually proven to be true. Most infectious diseases that people suffer from today have actually been known about by humans for thousands of years. Diseases like TB and malaria can be found in ancient Egyptian texts, and the Bible also makes several references to leprosy. They were well aware that sick individuals were contagious and needed to be quarantined, but they mainly believed that magic and evil spirits caused these illnesses. But the ancient Greeks mainly rejected supernatural theories, and Galen stated that it was bad air, or miasma, that was the true cause of infectious diseases. The miasma theory was the prevailing explanation for disease throughout medieval times, but when doctors had no way to heal patients during devastating events like the Black Death, a few people started to have other ideas about what really caused these epidemics. The miasma theory officially fell apart in the late 19th century, but looking back at what science already knew before then, makes me think that germ theory should have been accepted much earlier than this. Girolamo Fercastro was the leading authority on syphilis during the 16th century, and he wrote a book in 1546 called On Contagion, where he stated that infectious diseases were caused by tiny particles, which can not only be spread by the air, but also by touching infected surfaces. He was followed a hundred years later by a Dutch scientist called Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who was able to use a microscope to see small creatures he called animalcules. And germ theory should have been proven beyond any doubt in 1835, when an Italian entomologist demonstrated that a fungus was the cause of a disease in silkworms called muscadine, and he used this knowledge to revive the European silk industry. Putting these three pieces of information together should have made it very clear to scientists at the time, but for some reason, the miasma theory prevailed. But the work of three other scientists over the next 30 years would finally put an end to the theory, and I'll go through the fascinating stories of each of them. Semmelweis was a Hungarian obstetrician, and he was working in a maternity ward in Vienna in 1847. But he noticed that there was a huge disparity in death rates from postpartum fever in two maternity clinics with the first clinic even having a higher maternal death rate than women who gave birth in the streets. The main difference in the two clinics was that the women were often examined by medical students in the first clinic, and Semmelweis noticed that they often came to the clinic immediately after handling dead bodies during autopsies. Using this knowledge, he theorised that students were carrying infectious cadaverous particles with them, so he instructed them to wash their hands with chlorinated lime before coming to the clinic. Amazingly, the death rate of the clinic dropped by over 90% within a few months, and he gained instant fame across all of Europe. However, his idea of infectious particles was met with fierce opposition by the medical community, and he was eventually driven insane, and would unfortunately die of sepsis in a mental asylum. It turned out that scientists from England were much more open to germ theory. The English movement was led by a doctor called John Snow, who was already well respected as a pioneer of anaesthesia during Semmelweis' time, and he even assisted in the birth of Queen Victoria's first two children, where he almost certainly would have washed his hands before doing so. 
but there was a localised outbreak of cholera in the Soho districts of London in 1854, which was part of the cholera pandemic that had been going on since 1846. Jon Snow decided to speak to local residents to gain more information about the outbreak, and he was then able to obtain information about the geographic distribution of deaths in the area, which led him to realise that the source of the outbreak was a public water pump in Broad Street. He was then able to convince the local authorities to remove the pump, and the water beneath the pump was later found to have been contaminated. A child's nappy was discovered, which was found to belong to a baby who recently had cholera. So Jon Snow found a clear link between water infection and disease which has led him to be known as the father of modern epidemiology. But he was fiercely opposed just like Ignaz Semmelweis before him and was never able to see the widespread acceptance of germ theory as he died from a stroke only four years later. The French chemist Louis Pasteur knew of the work of Semmelweis and Jon Snow and he wanted to prove germ theory to the scientific community beyond any reasonable doubt. It was common knowledge at the time that a liquid mixture would spoil after a few days if left to sit. An example of this is when sugar turns into alcohol, but it was mostly thought to be caused by decomposition in the air, whereas Pasteur proposed that it was fermentation by microorganisms that caused this. He proved his theory in the early 1860s by conducting his now famous experiment, where he heated two flasks which each contained a fermentable liquid. The first flask had a swan neck, which allowed air inside, but no microorganisms. The second flask had no swan neck, so both air and microorganisms could enter. Since only the liquid in the second flask showed any changes, Pasteur demonstrated conclusively that it isn't air, but actually microorganisms that cause this decomposition. He published his results, and germ theory was finally accepted by mainstream science. Pasteur's work on germ theory was built on by the German Dr. Robert Koch, who proposed four criteria, or postulates, that are needed to establish a causal link between an organism and a disease. He used this to establish the causative agent of cholera, anthrax, and tuberculosis, the latter of which he won a Nobel Prize for in 1905. So the scientific journey of the belief in miasma theory to the acceptance of germ theory is an example of how dogmatic views can hinder progress. Even though the earliest proposers were mocked at their time, they are now considered to be heroes and revolutionaries. A replica pump was reinstalled in Broad Street in remembrance of Jon Snow in 1992 and in 2008 a coin in honour of Ignaz Semmelweis was created in Austria.